Beam down smoke. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Nalo and today we're going to be talking about a trading guide for the mid and low tier trading. It's kind of an updated and upgraded trading guide uh, from the previous one that I made earlier last year. The reason that I'm updating it is because a lot of changes have happened to trading since then. It is a little bit early to update it. We are a little bit early into 2020. A lot of stuff can still change, but I think February is a good year to do it, especially with the market changes that's going to be happening. So that's why you have this guide in front of you today. I also wanted to make sure to give a quick announcement about Sing for Skins. So Sing for Skins, I'm going to actually postpone a little bit because people didn't really have enough time to come and audition when I wanted to do the recording. So I'm going to go ahead and postpone it and work on it a little bit later. It's only going to be a few days that I postpone it on. So that's why you have this video today instead of Sing for Skins. So with that being said, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video and let's get started on this video. So guys, I want to go ahead and start by kind of just building this trading guide up from ground zero. I'm not going to go off of anything in the previous trading guide because I don't want to make you guys go watch two videos if you haven't seen the first one already. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and start at demand. So demand is this concept that is very important in trading in general. You have to know what demand is if you want to trade successfully. Basically what demand is is how desired an item is by the general populace of people. So for example, we have the AK-47 red line. This is a very, very high demand skin. Some people even consider it liquid. We'll talk about liquid in a second here, but let me finish up demand. So with demand, you want to make sure that you're going for items that a lot of people want. That way you're going to have a lot more trade offers on them and you can negotiate a lot better with those specific items. Some really high demand items, for example, include Op Asimov's UMP Primal Sabers, the AK Redlined, as I mentioned before, the Op Lightning Strikes, those have gained a lot of demand recently. You have a lot of the new skins from the new operation and generally just new skins in general are going to be really high demand because you know they're new they have a shiny new coat of paint on them nobody has really been able to test them out and with that being said they are of course higher demand as a factor so generally to sum up demand and how it affects you as a trader you want to make sure that you do go for high demand items if you want to do a lot more negotiating and a lot more trading in general it's going to influence how many offers you get of course is you know how much demand your items actually have that's how many people out there that are actually going to be trying to trade you and uh, it's not going to be influenced by people you know not wanting the items because most people want high demand items and even if a person doesn't specifically trade for high demand items they're still going to want them just because you know they get a lot of offers and they are easily tradable. However, you will notice that I did not say that demand is king because it's not. Demand is not the overarching factor. It's not something that will completely ruin your trading experience if you don't have a good grasp of demand. It's just simply something that makes trading easier. And if you don't want to make your trading experience more easy and more smooth, then you go ahead and just focus on high demand items. But obviously you can make more money without using high demand items. It's just going to require you to have a little bit better networking skills and a little bit better negotiating skills in general. So yeah, don't be fully on this demand train. Don't say like, hey, I, if I don't have high demand items or if I don't get high demand items in this trade, then I'm not going to profit in the end. You can still profit. You can profit a lot more without high demand items, for example, uh, but they do make trading very easy and simple. And that's kind of why I wanted to introduce this exact concept in the beginning of this video. On the flip side of demand, we have rarity. So basically rarity is going to be how rare an item is. It's very, you know, self-explanatory. Well, when you come to rarity, you have a complete opposite side of the coin as demand. There's not as many people out there that are going to actively try to trade for rare items. And there's not a lot of people out there that are going to actively seek them out and offer on them if you do have them. However, rare items are going to possess a completely different benefit. They can get a lot more money because in general, they have ranged values. So for example, if we look at souvenir skins in general, you're going to see that when they ask for price checks on souvenir skins, especially rare souvenir skins, people aren't going to know exactly how much they're worth. And even people that do give them price checks are not going to give them an exact price check. The reason for this is because they don't have exact values. They are very far away from exact values. Souvenir skins, especially rare souvenir skins, ranged values, which essentially means that they can go from a midpoint to a high point or a low point to a high point, for example. So if you go ahead and look at, let's say, Katowice 2014 skins, these are very rare in general. They, you know, there's not a lot of them in existence and they don't have as much demand as your, you know, common AK Redline, for example. However, they do have a lot of demand for rare item collectors. So if you look at my FAMAS, for example, that I used to own, it was a three times non-hollow Katowice 2014 skin. It was a very nice FAMAS, but one of the main problems I found when I was trading it was that there weren't a lot of people willing to give me good offers on it because no one really knew exactly how much it was worth. 
I didn't even know how exactly how much it was worth. I just kind of had an estimate. So generally, I could get up to about $100 on this item if I really tried and I really found a person that was super interested in it. However, I could also get around $60 on the item if I didn't do enough negotiating, I didn't go out there and do enough trading with it. So when it comes to items that are very rare, you're going to want to test them a lot and have a lot of knowledge before you try to invest in them. I have seen a lot of people that have you know, asked me if they should invest or if they should start trading for really rare items. And my response is always to the same to these people. Make sure you have a lot of experience with this kind of thing because if you don't, you can really get burned and you can end up getting into this hole where you aren't trading your items because you don't know how to do it. And you can end up losing a lot of money if you go for these really rare items without knowing their actual value because you won't be able to trade them successfully, of course. Now you'll probably remember that I mentioned a ranged value when it comes to rares, and this is where all of the profit is. So when it comes to ranged values, what you can do with rare items is you can buy them on the low end of the range and sell them on the high end of the range. So if we go back to the example with my FAMAS that I had, the two times non-hollow KWT 2014 FAMAS that I had earlier, that one is going to have a ranged value of about $60 to about $100. So if I go ahead and purchase this Samas for around $60 or less, I'm getting it on the low end, which means that I have a profit margin of about $40 if I can sell it for all the way up to the high end, which makes it a very good item to trade with if you know what you're doing, because that means you can get the high end and buy for the low end. And that's why a lot of people like rares. And honestly, it is a pretty good endeavor if in this current era of trading, especially with the seven day trade ban, you're gonna be waiting anyway. So you might as well, you know, try to work out offers while you have that trade ban and then just throw them out after you're done with it. Speaking of trade bans, of course, we do have Arcanas, which I'm going to more strictly mention now. So basically Arcanas are a liquid item from Dota 2. Now, they're not necessarily an item. People do refer to them as an item, but in general, they are actually a category of items. And I did say this in the Arcana Trading Guide as well and explained it a little bit more in depth. Uh, but basically, what Arcana has come down to is three things. First of all is their cash price, their item price is the second one, and the third one is that they are instantly tradable. And those are the three main factors of Arcanas, the three main things that you have to know when you're trading with Arcanas. So in general, Arcanas are going to have a cash price of about 18.5, it's kind of risen recently, uh, however it does range from about 17.5 to 18.5, uh, but right now it's probably on the higher end. And when it comes to their item price, they're going to be about 28 to 30. And, you know, of course, ranging depending on how demanded they are at the moment. Right now, they're pretty high demand again, so they're probably going to be in the 30 range. And then, obviously, they are instantly tradable, meaning you don't have to wait seven days. You will have to wait seven days if you buy them off of the market. But if you go ahead and just get them off of a third-party trading site, for example, or if you get them from another person on Steam, they're not going to have a trade ban and you can instantly trade those Arcanas, which can really very well circumvent the trade ban that we currently have in CSGO. One more thing is that Arcanas are liquids. Earlier I did mention liquids and I'm now going to explain them in detail. So basically a liquid item is an item that is very, very, very high demand. Not just generally high demand, but very, very high demand. This means the item is going to be pretty much accepted everywhere. The item is pretty much instantly tradable. Of course, if it has a trade ban, it's not instantly tradable, but you get the point. Basically, the item is very high demand. It's a lot of people want it. Everybody's going to want it at some point in time, unless they're super weird and they don't want to make free money. And liquid items are just very, very good for transactions. These really liquid items pretty much only boil down to Arcanas and red lines at the current moment. Red lines is a little bit arguable right now as well. Uh, but generally, liquid items are just going to be those items that have very, very consistent values. They have something that can really, you know, hold their value very well. When it comes to Dota, there is the ability to buy Arcanas in-game, which holds their value very, very well. If you look at, for example, sticker capsules in CSGO, the 99 cent sticker capsules, those ones you can buy in-game for 99 cents plus tax. And then if you go ahead and look at the Steam market, it's pretty much the same exact price with tax added, of course, because there's no tax on Steam transactions uh, when you're buying them. So when you look at sticker capsules, you can that's going to have a very consistent value both on the Steam market and in game because you can buy them in game. That's the same thing with Arcanas and that's why they are liquid and that's why they hold such a very consistent value. So basically the two factors of liquids is they have very high demand and they also have something that controls their value. So when it comes to Dota 2, like I said, you can buy them in game, which influences why their price is so consistent. Liquids are always going to have very consistent prices and they're not going to have very good ranges. They're also not going to increase very much. Sometimes they will increase a little bit on their own range uh, like Dota 2 Arcanas do. Uh, like I said before, but in general, they're 
they're not going to increase very much or they're not going to decrease very much, meaning liquids are usually very safe to hold. Obviously, when it comes to keys, those weren't safe to hold because they lost all of their demand once they got trade banned, uh, but obviously no one can see that coming. So in general, liquids are very good to hold on to. So if you look up on screen right now, I went ahead and made a hierarchy of demand. This is basically going to show you liquid items all the way down to rare items and essentially where everything falls into place. And with that being said, those are going to sum up the main factors of demand and the main type of items that you're going to want to trade for in CSGO. So with that being said, guys, I'm now going to move on to the main two factors of profit. Basically, what that means is it's going to be the main two ways that people make profit using trading in 2020 and I guess the end of 2019. So these two main methods are not super important right now just because trading is really varied. The market is changing a whole bunch on things. And so these methods aren't really used to a T right now, but they probably will be referred to back in the future. So uh, let's go ahead and explain that in a little bit of detail. So the first method is going to be upgrading and downgrading. This is a method I also talked about in my previous trading guide, but basically upgrading and downgrading is going to essentially be where you upgrade a lot of items into one item and downgrade one item into a lot of items. This is a very good method for making profit because what you can do is you can downgrade a big item into a lot of items, but you can get more money out of the person you're trading with because they have to overpay you. When someone is upgrading for an item, they should essentially overpay you by a margin. Generally, it's 6%, but it can range a little bit depending on the item. So when you are getting a lot of items from one of your own items, you should ask for about a 6% overpay, and that's going to get you a 6% profit margin on that trade. Now, obviously, you're probably wondering, well, now that I downgraded all these items, how do I keep that 6% profit, profit margin if I want to upgrade those items again? Well, simply put, you don't overpay the person you're trading with. Or you could also alternatively only upgrade two of those items at a time, which is not going to require as much overpay. You can hold the same margin. To explain this in a little bit more detail, let's say you do a trade for one of your big $100 items for a downgrade of six items that are worth about $110 or so. So you made about a $10 profit margin and you're wondering how to keep those six items and make sure you retain the same profit margin of $10. So the main thing that you're gonna to wanna to do here is probably just trade two of those items up at a time. So you're gonna go from six items to three items ideally. This means that you don't have to really overpay the person since they aren't really downgrading, they're just kind of you know splitting their item in half, so to speak. And so when you go ahead and upgrade those two items into one, you're not gonna be losing that profit margin and you're going to also be upgrading your items a little bit. So once you do that for all six of the items, you should ideally have three items. If you go ahead and do that again for two of those items, you're going to have two items. You're going to have one from the leftover third and you're also going to have one total item. Then all you have to do is upgrade that one more time and you're going to have a bigger item that you don't lose the profit margin on. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. I'll have a graphic up on screen to kind of explain it a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, that's generally how you want to do upgrading and downgrading in 2020. Now the second method for making profit, I actually briefly explained this a little bit earlier, but essentially it's trading on range or trading on margin. So there's a lot of varying names for this. I generally call it trading on margin and I haven't really heard a lot of people call it anything in specific, uh, but that's what I've kind of identified it as. So what trading on margin is, is essentially it's where you take an item that you buy for a low range and sell for a high range. So when it comes to souvenir items or Katowice items, you can go ahead and buy those on their low range. And if you go ahead and trade those for their high range, you can make a lot of profit on them without even having to deal with upgrading or downgrading. So for example, let's say you bought the FAMAS that I had for $60. If you go ahead and trade that for a $100 item, one single $100 item, you'll make a profit of $40 on that margin. And that is why it's called trading on margin. You buy low, sell high. And this is very simple. It's very straightforward. There's not really a lot of, to explain. Uh, be sure that you are going for rarer items when you trade on margin because these ones don't have very specific values and you can pretty easily buy them for low and sell for high. And really that pretty much sums it up. There's not much else to say about trading on margin. Just keep in mind that when you are trading on margin, you're going to have a lot of items that don't have very much demand. They are going to have demand at only a very small subset of people. So make sure you're good at networking and make sure you know that small subset of people when you do that trading. With that being said, guys, I wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of how to find people to trade with. So there's a few different methods. The ones that I mainly use and the ones that are successful for me is going to be r slash global offensive trade. This is Reddit. This is very simple. A lot of people use this. You probably already know what global offensive trade is already, but if you don't, you can go check it out. r slash global offensive trade. You're going to need to get a pass to join it, but that's a very simple and straightforward process and it's very fast. The second method of finding trades is going to be the Steam discussion boards. This one is kind of just a good one to spam trades out on, and generally you're going to get bot offers or you're going to get scammers offering you, but sometimes every now and then you are going to get a good offer. I have had a few good offers on here, so you definitely don't want to discount this. It is a good method right now. 
The third option is a trading server. These ones are a little bit more fun, but you gotta make sure you're able to take insults and take jokes because there are a lot of those flying around. The main ones are going to be TGP, the Global Paradise, and Rise Trading Server and Noor Trading Server. So these are all the biggest trading servers that everybody knows of. Back in the day, there used to be one called Alias, but that one is now offline and people don't really use it anymore at all. So yeah, it's going to be Noor Trading Server, Rise Trading Server, and TGP. I'll go ahead and put the IPs in the description below as well if you want to go ahead and connect to those. TGP is the one that has the most population on it, but it has had a lot of drama recently with the owners and some of the admins even sharking people. So be careful when you go into that one and make sure you have a lot of knowledge of trading once you move on to that one. Rice Trading Server, I haven't really heard a lot of bad things about. I do know that a guy that owns Rice Trading Server, his name is Blizzard, he seems like a cool dude on Twitter. So that one's probably a good option. That one has the second most amount of users on it, but generally doesn't have that many on it at one time. And the Noor Trading Server is going to have the lowest amount of owner uh, people on it, but it does have a very chill owner as well. And that one seems pretty legit and reputable. Another option for advertising your trades is going to be Twitter. There are a lot of traders on Twitter and a big trading community on Twitter in general. So you can go ahead and advertise your trades on there and, you know, maybe add some people that might be interested in your items and they might retweet it for you and put your item out there a little bit more. Other than that, though, there's not really going to be any more places to find people. I know that there is a CS Deals chat. It's actually a chat on the site itself. And people do talk about trading in there quite a lot, but it's a little bit weird and there's not a lot of people on there. I don't know if I would really trust it too much to get you a lot of offers, uh, but it is an option if you're running out of them. And then of course, one of the biggest options to finding trades in the current era is using Discord. Discord is huge. There's a lot of different trading servers on there. There's a lot of good ones. There's one called Trademark. That one's owned by McLaren. He's a cool dude as well. Uh, there's one called uh, my trading server, obviously. I have quite a lot of people in my Discord community that do trade very frequently, and my trading uh, portion of the server is very, very active. So you can go check that out and you know send some trades in there. We do have a thousand members in Discord now, so we are actually bigger than a lot of the major trading servers as well. So that's kind of cool. And then probably the most well-known Discord trading server is going to be Random Brits Trading Server. However, people generally don't seem to be super knowledgeable on skins and values in that server. So I don't know, kind of to go into that one at your own risk. If you're not satisfied with these options, there are of course some alternatives. You can go ahead and use Facebook marketplaces or you can use some smaller newer trading servers like Utrade, for example. They sponsored me recently in one of my videos and they're you know a cool place, they have a nice setup. So you can go check them out as well. And with that being said, guys, that is pretty much it for finding trades. If you do have any more ideas, be sure to leave them in the comments of this video, though. And with that, that pretty much ends the video. We covered a lot of different things. We covered a rarity hierarchy and sort of a demand hierarchy, which is very important to know in this current era. We covered rarity in general and how trading on margin works concerning rarity. We also covered the upgrading and downgrading method, which is very, very popular. And we also covered how to find trades and how to trade in general. And with that being said, guys, that's pretty much everything you need to know about trading in 2020. If you think I missed something major, go ahead and comment it below, and I'll go ahead and add it in the next guide in the future. But with that being said, guys, I really do hope that you enjoyed this video. I put a lot of work into it and a lot of heart and soul. So hopefully it came out very well, and hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Sorry for the long run time, but clearly it's a guide, so it's going to naturally tend to have a long run time. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to go check out the Discord server in the description below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more content like this in the future. And be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it to show your support for my channel and show your support for this video. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you all next time. Peace.